It's nice to speak with you, Marinus. And today I look forward to hearing you talk about internal control over your supply chain. Can you start by yeah. providing a brief background of yourself? Uh, sure. I am uh, an independent consulting, providing services to organizations. Uh, and the services, I prefer to call them value management. My background is uh, in uh, advisory and management positions in internal audit, risk management, finance, um, and also internal control. And the, the services that, that I'm offering, value management, that is the integration of risk management and performance management. It's all basically about the question for management teams, uh, what is the value that I create and what is the value that I preserve for my stakeholders? And the approach is particularly important for organizations that have multiple operations as management, top management needs to make conscious decisions as to what level of autonomy and freedom they want to give to the management of their subsidiaries or these locations or divisions that uh, are in their company. Thanks. My first question is, what do you mean when you say internal control over your supply chain? Internal control is a very broad term. It has many aspects. Basically, it is about how you organize your business and to keep it uh, in control. So it's about all the management actions and the control measures that you take as a responsible management to uh, run your business. And why is this important? Well, it's important because there is a vast variety of opportunities and risks that every organization faces. It can vary from very tangible risks such as earthquakes and floods and wars and piracy. Uh, but it can also be internal risks like um, what your employees do that you do not like, like fraud or theft or strikes or sabotage. And on the other hand, there is um, innovation that your business could benefit from, like mobile devices in the supply chain and uh, big data analytics. These are new developments that can help management teams to better achieve their objectives. And how is this done effectively in practice? Uh, are there steps that companies can take? Well, <clears throat> When I work with companies, I basically take um, an, an, an eight-step approach to help them with optimizing their internal control. And you can apply these steps to a subset of your organization, and you can apply them to uh, a division, you can apply them to uh, your entire organization worldwide. Basically, it's always these basic questions that, that you need to ask yourself and make sure that you answer them properly as a management team. Um, the first question is, how can I coordinate this internal control in my organization? As it has so many different aspects and there are so many different departments involved, like information security, um, technical departments, uh, sales, finance, IT, um, and this also has to do with the company culture. I mean, you cannot be effective with your internal control if your organizational culture is not open and people are not free to speak about unrealistic assumptions or about misconduct. So this openness is also part of this uh, coordination that is required. Now, the second step has to do with um, the different stakeholders of your organization. This is not only about finance. This is not only about uh, shareholders. It is about many different stakeholders within your organization, including your employees, your suppliers, your customers. And as responsible management, you need to balance their interests. That's a very important uh, step. Um, and you need to make clear uh, decisions 
as some of these interests can be conflicting. Then you need to set clear business goals and make sure that you communicate them to everyone involved so that they know what are the acceptable outcomes and the bandwidths that they need to stay within. It also requires that you have a good overview of your daily operations. It's my observation that many business processes are overly complex and that not everyone in the management team knows what his or her colleague is doing. So you need to have, um, need to make it clear what people are doing and who is responsible for what. Then in that step five, it requires clear insights in the risks and the opportunities. As there are so many different uh, risks and opportunities that you face, also opportunities. Um, business is dependent on opportunities. And quite often, when people take a risk management approach, they only focus on the negative aspects. So that's more a one-sided approach, which is not very beneficial. You also need to work on a clear design of your controls. And again, this is a balancing act because controls, they take time, they cost money, they limit the autonomy and the freedom of your managers and your employees. So you need to balance them carefully, but you need them, you need to have these safeguards built in your processes to make sure that you can achieve your objectives. Then step seven is make sure that you implement your controls that you have designed properly so that people on the shop floor know what is expected from them. So that requires training, explanations, and also you need to make sure that these rules are being followed. And that is basically step eight, where you monitor the execution of these controls and you evaluate whether they have been understood and applied properly. These basically are the eight steps that you need for internal control. Thank you again for sharing these views on internal control in the supply chain.